finally, if, if the idea of plugging the ducts is good, but the plugs themselves are not tolerated well, we can then surgically close these ducts by using cautery. Just a little bit. The eyelid is numbed up so you don't feel it at all. We heat it up, the duct, and it shrinks up the, the ducts, and, and it, it's closed for good. Uh, that's the disadvantage of that technique is that you cannot easily reverse it. But the advantage is there's no side effects from irritation from a plug. Let's talk a little bit about restasis, and then we'll take some questions. Uh, here are all the bad things about restasis. It is expensive. Uh, it, it costs, if you had to pay for the whole thing out of pocket, about $200 a month. Maybe less if you go to some pharmacies. It may take you three months to get the first bit of benefit out of it. Uh, it only works for about half the patients who take it. And for the first couple weeks you take it, it stinks, and it may make your eyes turn red. So you say, well, geez, why would I take a drop that cost me that much money? Uh, it, I, I've got a 50-50 chance of it helping, but I won't find out until I've used it for three months and I'm gonna, my eyes are going to be stinging. Why would I do that? Well, because for some of our patients who take it, it really works well. Restasis is an anti-inflammatory medication. And where there's inflammation and where that inflammation is causing slow tear production, it can really increase that production and really make your eyes more comfortable. I do, uh, I do prescribe it a fair amount, but with the warnings I've just given you that it is not a, uh, it is not a quick and easy fix for anybody. So uh, I think it's a great drug otherwise. Restasis is designed for and works best for aqueous deficiency or water deficiency. It may help to some extent in people who have meibomian or oil gland disease or blepharitis because those are inflammatory conditions and this is an anti-inflammatory medication. But we're really taking it more for its ability, ideally, to enhance tear production and that's in aqueous or water deficiency. Another thing you can do is take it once daily. Uh, many of my patients even take it every other day after they've been on it for a period of time. I think you need to have those first three months where you take it twice a day according to the recommendations. But if it's working for you at once a day, then, then take it once a day. And lastly, uh, a lot of patients who take Restasis, after three months they say, you know, gosh, I can't tell if it's helping. I think it may be better, but I'm not sure if it's just because the weather changed. It's been three months. Uh, you can try an experiment and just take it in one eye. And it's not gonna hurt, not gonna hurt to do that. Uh, it, you'll, you'll learn fairly quickly whether it was helping the eye that's taking it or, or whether it's not. You're welcome to experiment a little bit in this way and you'll learn a lot about your own eyes and their treatment. Mucus deficiency, I'm just going to say about this, there are a number of, of uh, diseases and chemical injuries that can cause destruction of the surface of the eye and this is, uh, it's uncommon and probably doesn't affect anybody in this room, although a good ophthalmic exam can determine if you have mucus deficiency in your dry eye. Let's talk just briefly about a couple things. There are a number of different causes of dry eye that can be very bothersome to our patients, and these pictures show some of them. They're really not dry eye causing, but they, they can make the eyes feel like they have dry eye. These are all conditions, I'll, I'll go through them very quickly. In the upper left corner is are bumps on the cornea that are called Salzman's nodules. They're like calluses, very hard to see for you, and even hard for us to see with a microscope in the office, but they can cause terrible symptoms. They're treatable, they're removable, and uh, they go away. Sutures in the upper uh, center picture are, uh, if you've had previous surgery in the eye, sur surgeons need to look for those. Incisions from previous surgery like radial keratotomy, which is shown in the upper right picture, can cause a great deal of, of discomfort that feels like dry eye. And there are treatments for this in some cases. And then there are conditions in the cornea in the lower left picture like like dystrophies, that's called basement membrane dystrophy. There are foreign bodies that are sometimes missed in the lower center picture. And in the lower right, filaments on the cornea, which are like a hangnail. They're dead skin cells of the cornea that hang loose and they move around and they hurt like crazy. They can be removed and when the dry eye is treated and those are removed, uh, the pain goes away. Doctors need to look for all of those. And one more. This is one that is often missed and highly important, conjunctival cholesis. Uh, it's a condition that, you know, I have m myself missed, uh, missed in, in patients who I've treated for a long time who have dry eye. And when we find it and when we treat it, we've solved their problem. It is uh, caused by relaxation of tissues. And in this case, the relaxation is in, in the tissue that sits on the surface of the eye. The white of the eye is covered with a paper-thin mucous membrane called conjunctiva. And as we get older, that conjunctiva becomes thicker and it becomes looser, like much of our skin. Uh, actually, uh, 
it becomes thicker in some places and like our skin it becomes thinner in other places. Typically as we age our skin gets thinner, doesn't it? It gets more fragile. And the same is true here. But what happens and what causes the problem is a bunching up of this mucous membrane at the lower corner of the eyelid. A bunching up so that when the eyelid moves, this skin-like tissue, which is designed to stay taut and stretched over the surface of the eyeball, it bunches up, it folds over, and when our eye moves, it gets pinched be between the eyelid and the eyeball. And that pinching causes a very distinct, painful, foreign body sensation and burning. And so it, it typically occurs in people over 50 who have typically been previously diagnosed with dry eye. I think there's a relationship to prior ocular surgery because what happens very often when we do surgery on the eye is what's shown in this picture. There's swelling of this mucous membrane. Can you appreciate in that picture how the, the mucous membrane is bub bubbled up? It's not flat on the white of the eye. This is called chemosis. And when this happens, we think that it, it stretches the, the tissue that, that holds down the, the mucous membrane, the conjunctiva, and allows this process to begin where the, the tissue gets stretched and loose and, and then it'll pinch on the surface of the eye. We can treat this, and in fact, there's a fairly simple surgery where we remove the excess mucous membrane in the area that's irritated, and when we do this, it is dramatic. Uh, this is a patient uh, before and one month after surgery. What you see on the right side, it's hard to photograph this, but you can see there's this sort of pinkish redundant tissue. Here after, one month after, in that area, there's new tissue that's grown into place. It's firmly adherent to the eye, and, and I can tell that by this picture because I see this sort of whitish, normal looking scar tissue in that area that's holding it down. And this patient's symptoms are gone, 100% relieved. Here's another patient. This is a fellow who lives right in the community here who is, um, had this two weeks after surgery. He had it going all the way around the, the whole circle of the eye. So I removed excess tissue 360 degrees around the circle of the eye, around the, around the colored part, around the cornea. And uh, he, is, uh, he, he was absolutely free of symptoms. And he can't say enough positive things about the surgery he had. There's actually a, um, there's more information about this, because this, I know this is an area of interest to a lot of you, maybe. Uh, there's a video at YouTube. Does everybody know about YouTube? Um, YouTube is a video site, and if you do a search for my name, John Hovanesian, and by the way, my cards are over here on the table, so you have my name. YouTube, you do a search for John Hovanesian, it's the first thing that comes up. There's a bunch of surgical videos and, uh, of mine there, but uh, this is something that's a, it's an interview with a patient. It's a whole instructional video. It's made for surgeons, because I wanted to let surgeons know about this, but you're welcome to view it and learn from it.